All right, Pun Frugal Streamer, I wanted to go through a quick video. Big news came out today from OBS Studio. They have released the release candidate for version 25 that is out for testing for everybody. So I wanted to go through a few of the changes and show you what they've added to OBS to make it even greater than it already is. So let's go ahead and get into the video. But first, uh, if you want to hit me up on my social media sites, you can check me out at twitch.tv forward slash the frugal streamer yt when i live stream mostly during the weekends you can hit me up on twitter at frugal underscore streamer that's where i post a lot of news and updates based on videos and what i what i'll be working on here in the future you can also hit me up on facebook and instagram the frugal streamer so make sure you check those out now let's get into the video all right so we're going to go through the full patch notes and there are some things I'm just not going to be able to show you that we will talk about, but there, most of the stuff I will also provide uh, just a clip on showing you how each thing works. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the notes. I will be reading directly from the notes themselves as there are a lot of them and they're pretty extensive. Okay, so the first thing that they talk about is uh, the ability now to capture Vulcan-based games. Uh, so now there is a hook for Vulcan Capture inside of OBS Studio. So just like your game capture would work on normal DirectX games, we now have the ability to capture Vulcan. Uh, now they say that there is currently some issues with Rainbow Six Siege. They've addressed it with the developers and they are hoping the developers can patch uh, Rainbow Six so that there's no issues with the uh, hooking of that you know game. But it may work for some people, may not work for others. All right, so the next thing is the ability to capture Windows. So, so we've had Windows capture for a while, but you really weren't able to capture browser-based Windows and any uh, Microsoft Store UWP programs. Well, now you can. Uh, so you have a few different options available that you can select. I would recommend leaving it in auto because if you have a UWP program, it will automatically select that new method. Uh, because it's the you know best option. The downside to this new method is that there's possibility of cursor lag, and as you see here, the highlighted yellow border around the capture window in your preview. The good thing is, is that's not broadcasted out, so you don't you're the only one that really sees it. Okay, so something I cannot show you, but they have added is a new browser plugin for Linux-based systems. All right, so the next thing is something I really like. One of the best features in this build, I believe, is importing scene collections. So if you are a Streamlabs OBS user or you use XSplit, which is these are the two uh, main softwares that are supported right now for this build. But if you're one of those and you want to import your scene collections, all your overlays, all your settings, all your different sources into OBS Studio, well, this is what you want to do. So it's easy to do. You just go to Scene Collections, select Import. It'll give you a window. It'll ask you a question. Do you want uh, OBS to search your PC for available files? Say yes. And when you do that, it'll give you a display of all the files available. And you go and scroll through, pick the one you want, import it, and it will bring all of your source files, all of your settings over into OBS Studio. Now, if your settings are different in OBS Studio, which in the case of this clip that I'm showing you, mine were, you're going to have to adjust size and everything else, but it's easy to do. It doesn't take long at all. And I know a lot of people are wanting to be able to, you know, bring their overlays and everything over from Streamlabs OBS into OBS Studio. This now gives you that ability, which is really cool. All right, so next thing is media source hotkey so they basically added some hotkeys to allow control of playback your stop start playback and restart so you can just go in and add keys i think what the the intention for future is to actually add buttons in the interface but for right now they're just they just have hotkeys available now the next thing and this is another really cool feature that i can see uh, helping a lot of people setting up their scenes here in the future is the ability to drag and drop URL uh, URLs to create browser sources. So this is a, uh, a, a website demo that they have set up just to show you how this works. But what they're what 
they're trying to do, and I think will be really good, is for companies like Nerd or Die that makes these overlays, uh, overlay packs, scene packs, scene collections, all that stuff for your for your broadcast software. Now you, you they can set up their packages so that it's just browser-based drag and drop if you desire to do that, uh, which will be really cool, and it'll be you know it'll be really easy to set up your scenes that way instead of having to go in and download a full package and doing all the files yourself. So it'll be an intro. It'll be interesting to see what companies like Nerdy will do with that. The next thing, which I think is really cool too, is they've added a T-bar to studio mode. So you go into two studio mode and you have this T-bar in the middle of your preview and your program screen. And this will fade from your preview to program and then it'll set up for your next screen once you got a, once you have it all the way to the right. You could also kind of put it in the middle if you kind of want both the uh, program and preview showing in your program at the same time. This is something that's been used in the video industry for a long time. It's been on video mixers forever and other softwares have actually had this like vMix. So finally you kind of see where OBS is trying to go. They're trying not only to gear this, the software to gamers but are also wanting this to be used by video professionals which it already is but this is one of those things that video professionals have been wanting for a long time and content creators too for that matter. So the T-Bar is now available and it works great. It will not work for stinger transitions and cuts though, just for fades. All right, the next thing, this is something I really can't show you how it works because there's not really full support yet for this in OBS, but it's called SRT, which is Secure Reliable Transport. Okay, so Secure Reliable Transport or SRT is sort of like NDI. The only difference between the two, well, there's some, there's a lot of differences. As for instance, you don't make a source yet, anyway. But right now, OBS. I'll tell you what OBS does for it. Is OBS has the ability now you can send out a stream to wherever. So you can use an SRT URL um, and plug it into your uh, streaming set in your streaming under settings. Add a custom, kind of like you do with RTMP. Uh, you add a URL, but this one's labeled SRT. Uh, colon for, for, forward slash forward slash colon and then or then whatever the URL numbers are or however it's set up. I don't know if it'll be an IP um, number or if it'll be a URL it could be. But SRL works sort of like NDI except it's designed over designed to work over unreliable internet, otherwise known as outside of your network, because you can't determine what the performance of anything outside of your network is going to be um, from point, you know, second to second. But this is designed to give a good feed over unreliable internet. So you're able to do this. And I saw this actually work. Uh, VMix did a live uh, podcast here recently where they showed how this works. They set up a webcam inside of a hotel in Tokyo or somewhere in Japan. And then they fed the feed to the producer of the podcast who was in Australia and it looked great. It was actually really good. It was, comp you know, it's compressed, but it's still a good quality feed. And it was a 1080p. So man, for what it was, it looked pretty good. Uh, so expect to see more in the future. This is another thing where OBS is kind of pointing toward professional type broadcasters and podcasters and things like that. And this can be used in things like esports and that sort of thing. Uh, and I mean, hey, if you want if you want somebody to stream with you and they're a state away and you want to put them in your stream, might be a good way to do it. So we'll see. But right now, the only thing you can do is you can send a stream out. You can't actually receive a stream yet, but I'm sure we'll see more of that here in the future. All right. So the next thing is in the scenes list. Now, instead of just seeing text and being able to select the text in your scenes list, They've added the ability to shift that to a grid button. So you can actually have buttons for each of your scenes that you can select instead of just your text. Uh, it's personal preference, you know, either one. But it's pretty neat. They have also added the ability, and this is something I like, is they've added the ability to lock your volume values on your audio mixer, which is really great. It's simple to do, um, and it'll keep you from inadvertently changing your volume, which is something I have done on occasion. 
The next thing they've done is they've, and this is just an aesthetic, is they've added source icons to your UI and to the list when you bring up the list, which is really nice. So it kind of gives a different, uh, shows you your different icons based on your source type, which is cool. Uh, another thing they have added is support for cube LUT files in the LUT filter. Okay, so I don't have any downloaded. And to be honest with you, I don't really use LUTs that much while I'm streaming, but they are available now, cube-based LUT filters, which are supposedly better than the, the ping-based ones. All right, so another feature which I really like because this is good for when you're setting up multi-audio track uh, recording is the ability to bring up all your audio sources at once. So right now, if you have a scene in your preview, before you would go in your advanced audio settings and it would only show the audio sources for that scene. Well now, you can go in and you can select to show all your inactive audio uh, tracks too. So then you can go and select what tracks you want each one to go to. Uh, so it's really nice and that's cool. That is a really cool feature. All right, so the next thing I really can't show you is I don't have a camera that, that auto orients itself, but they have built the ability now in OBS Studio for things like the new stream cam where you can rotate it and it will reorient itself on your scene so that you're not sitting sideways when you turn the camera, which is really cool. Uh, like I said, Stream Cam does that. Uh, your phone, some phone cams might do that. If you're using IP-based uh, webcam type apps, you may be able to do that there. Uh, but anyway, support inside of OBS is there to support that, uh, support that now. The next thing, which I think is pretty cool, is in Projector, instead of having to step out of your, when you send a projector over to another screen, instead of having to step out of Projector and then go and change the projector type, you can now just do it within the projector screen. So you just right click on your projected screen and you can change it from full screen to windowed and vice versa. So that's a really neat little feature. Another thing for you scene builders that love ease of building your scenes, now is the ability to select multiple sources and copy and paste those sources over into another scene if you would want to. Want to. And that's really nice because now, you know, it keeps, just keeps you from having to redo everything and adding sources and stuff. Just copy and paste all the ones you want, bring them into your next scene, and boom, you're there, ready to go. They've also uh, added the option to enable and disable uh, Better Twitch TV and uh, Frank and Z chat extensions to your Twitch account uh, stream section. So you, now you have those available in your chat window, which is nice to have. Another thing they've done now is when you're recording, remember you have a system icon down in the lower right hand corner here that shows your recording. Well, now they've sh they've added a pause icon so that when you've paused your recording, it will now show up as pause in the system tray, which is cool. Now this is something I cannot demonstrate for you, but they have added a custom quantization matrix option to the quick sync encoder. And this is only available on Ice Lake or newer 10th gen Intel processor. I believe it's in, I believe they're uh, in some laptops right now. I, unfortunately, I don't have one, so I can't show you that. But if you do have one, well, they've just added this, which should improve quality. All right, the next thing is if you use scrolling text in your scene, you now have the ability to toggle, toggle looping in the scroll filter. So it's pretty cool, nice little feature. They have also added a fade to black option for quick transitions in studio mode, which has been something that has been requested by a lot of people. Another thing that I think is cool is if you're one of those content creators that does a lot of recording on OBS and you have this crazy file system, well, they've now added uh, specifiers to the file name formatting option in advanced settings. Uh, if you hover your cursor over the uh, file name formatting, it'll bring up a window with additional options that you could add uh, to help custom cater your filing system for your video clips, which is really cool. They have also added a hotkey to reset the stats on your window panel. So a lot of people do benchmarking in OBS and for various reasons, uh, you will get some render lag. Like if you're, if you're bringing up a game, for instance, uh, you will get render lag in that. Well, you want to go in and reset that if you're benchmarking 
uh, because otherwise you're going to have to alt tab, you're going to you have to reset, and when you bring the game back up, well, guess what? It, it has render lag come back up again. So it's kind of a pain in the butt. So now they've added a hotkey so that you can set that to uh, to your keyboard. If you have Stream Deck, you can set it to your Stream Deck or Touch Portal. Uh, any of those programs that are hot trick, hotkey controllable, you can set up a button so that you can clear your stats when you're in game without having to you know go through hoops and all that stuff. And this is really big for single PC live streamers. And the last thing, which is really cool, is if you go into your video settings, you'll note now that you have aspect ratios to the right of your resolution sizes for both your canvas and your downscale. And as you change your uh, your uh, resolutions, you can type it in, you'll see that the aspect ratios change on the fly. So it's really cool. And that's really all the new features that they have added to OBS Studio. And of course, there's, there's some big ones in there that I think a lot of people will use a lot. I think, to me, the scene collection importation is really the one that stands out to me. And if you're a if you're a gamer that plays bulk, bulking games like Doom, uh, I know Doom Eternal's coming out. That'll be a big one. Um, you know, Rainbow Six. Now Vulcan support is there, which is great on the game capture. So anyway, guys, that is it. I'm here in post-production, actually at the end of the video. And I figured, hey, I've got two B-roll clips left of things I did not cover in my uh, commentary. So here I am, new shirt. Maybe a little rougher looking, I don't know. But anyway, so here's two features real quick I wanna go over them. Uh, in advanced audio properties now, you have the ability to choose whether you want your volume levels to display in decibels or in percentage. So the new thing, it's always been decibels, but now you can change it to percentage. So you can say, okay, I want my volume at 75%, 50%, 100%, whatever, instead of the decibel scale that they use in uh, OBS Studio. Now, it does not change your actual audio mixer, mixer 2%, which I think it should, it'd be nice if it did, but uh, it will stay in decibels in the audio mixer. This is just inside of your advanced audio properties where you can do the percentages. Okay, and then the last one that I missed is you have the ability now to save your replays by, by pressing a little button. So if you have replays enabled, uh, you can then go set a hotkey to save replay. And once you set the hotkey, that will give you a little button to the right of your replay where you, you can just press that button to save a replay, uh, which is really cool. So those are the two things I missed and I do apologize for that. But otherwise, this is the end of the video. Listen, if you have any questions about any of these new features, please comment below. Hit me up on Twitter at frugal underscore streamer. Also, hit me up on all my other socials. My Twitch, you can follow me there. Uh, you know, make sure you subscribe, like uh, here on YouTube, hit the notification bell, all that stuff. But I'll provide links to all my socials below. Uh, and if you didn't know, I do have a website, thefrugalstreamer.live, that includes my stream, all YouTube videos, and my merch. So if you want to get some uh, TFS merch, hey, it's there for you. So anyway, other than that, listen, I appreciate everybody watching the video. I hope this helped you out. I'm really excited about OBS 25. Uh, I can't wait for the public release to come out. And get, there is one little bug, I will say. Uh, if you're using a new window capture, if you have a browser source also in your scene with this window capture, there is a high probability that OBS will crash. Uh, the developers have acknowledged this. Uh, on their Discord, I talked to them about this, and they know about it, and they are trying to fix it before the public release. So anyway, that is something just to keep in mind if you're going to be doing the, art, the release candidate, uh, you know, that this might happen. Other than that, I've had no problems. It's worked really good so far. So anyway, as a matter of fact, that's what I'm using right now is the release candidate to record this. So I hope you guys have a great week. Y'all be safe out there, and if I don't have another video that comes out before the weekend, have a safe weekend. Uh, make sure you uh, like, comment. Uh, if you don't like the video, well, dislike it. Anyway, it's a big help, and I just appreciate you watching. So, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.